that would be bloody oh. oh shit. Why is it every time I try and film something, something bad happens? Right then, how's it going? Um, the light keep going out over there. Am I losing my spanners here today? This is running out of battery, isn't it? What's going on today? Well, we'll turn you down, put you down there, do your thing. Oh, let's just put you on charge, shall we? Oh, my batteries get charged up in this little howdy hole around here. Right then, so after the worst vlog start to a video ever, I'm back. Uh, I've had a couple of days chilling out in beautiful, salubrious Ipswich. You may have noticed in the news, right, that there's a lot of idiots out there. Or actually, no, let's put it rightly, there's a minority of idiots out there who love flying their drones in stupid places. The FAA says it was made aware of the incident this afternoon, and they are investigating it. According to the FAA, a drone pilot that flies unsafely could face fines of over 1400 per violation. He's including fines of up to 250000 and imprisonment for up to three years. Drone organizations have already condemned the incident, saying the pilot of the drone should receive swift and just punishment for this example. There was one time it was used great, uh, which was when magician geezer who did the staying in the London Eye or whatever it was, he stood in a box, didn't he, up in London. We'll get it sooner or later. It's not Craig David. David Blaine. Uh, David Blaine. He was the one who stood up. He sat up in the thing for ages, and some old boy, because he was fasting for a month, he some geezer flew up at McDonald's on a drone next to him. That is a use of a drone that I definitely would have got a no tam out for. Um, we'll learn about them later. I didn't know you had to do all this stuff. But anyway, what prompted me to do it was, is that I had a few jobs come in that I was gonna have to use my drone for and that I was thinking, hmm, I'm on a bit of a gray area here. I'm getting paid for this. And I'm sure I've read somewhere that to do this legally and get paid, I need to, you know, I need to be registered with something called the CAA, which stands for the Civilian Aviation Authority. So I looked for some places online. You have to get a thing called a PIFCO, which is a Permission for Commercial Operations License. And I looked at a few places online and I found this place called UAV8. I was like, why is it called U? Why do they put an 8 after it? Uh, UAV8, isn't it? Uh, all the instructors are like Apache helicopter pilots. And they're sort of, I think they're coming to the close maybe of their careers. They're very passionate about keeping the skies safe. And they're also, they're doing the right thing, right? When you're coming to a change in your life, they're looking at the next thing and they're getting that organized now. And by doing this UAV8 thing, uh, teaching people how to get their um, PIFCO, that's what we're gonna call it from now on, permission for commercial operations. By doing that, they're, they're not only looking after their interests in the future, but they're also looking after the sky, and that's important. So I had to go to Ipswich, do two days worth of tuition, and these were long days, guys. Eight in the morning till sort of half five at night, six o'clock or something like that on the first day. And then the second day was eight in the morning. We didn't get out of classes until half seven in the evening. Then we had a proper exam to do, an examination, and then a practical assessment the next morning. So overall, I was there Saturday, Sunday, and Monday morning. It was something I was super worried about. You don't know what you're going into, do you? You don't know how strict the examination's gonna be. I've done an exam since I was like 19, and that was years ago, <laughs> all right? So I'm not used to doing it. So come along for the ride. If you guys wanna know what it's like to go for a PIFCO or something like that, or go to a company like UAV8, number one, I would 100% recommend them. Um, they're great guys, really, really nice, and the tuition's excellent. Um, regardless of what you learn, you you get a really good insight into what it's like to be a military helicopter pilot as well. It was wicked. So yeah, let's go along for the ride. Come along with us, we'll see what happened. I'll tell you what we did. I'll tell you what it was like. And at the end of it, you might see whether I, um, whether I passed or failed. So I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get into it, guys. Quick muscle set though, hey, come on, Dad. For that snow already, haven't you, mate? Oh, look at your paws. Oh, dear, oh, God. How horrible must it be to be a cat when it's snowing? Just going for a wee and you get your bits all cold. Ooh. 
Right, so we're here. Um, really, I don't know how much I'm going to be allowed to film. Probably not a lot at all, to be totally honest with you. So, I'm going to pop my little GoPro in here as well. See what we can get away with. Ah, oh, bit of Prada Sport. Oh, boy, smells sexy! UAV8. Can I have my ticket now? Is that okay? Uh, yeah, sure. For the car Do you know when are you leaving? Okay, thanks very much. Cheers. into our lessons and I turned the camera off because the guys are obviously all in the military still and didn't really want to have their faces plastered all over YouTube and that's totally fine but I thought I'd give you a quick idea about what we went through on the first day and what you can expect to do as well if you go with UAV8. We learned about standard permissions in the UK. We learned that you're not allowed to fly your drone over 400 feet high and 500 meters away from you. We learned about article 94 and article 95 of the air law. We learned about the drone code. We learned about cap 393 and specific to UAVs, CAP 722. Guys, by the way, check these out if you want to see what they say because they're really, really informative. We learned about AGL, we learned about AMSL, we learned about loads of stuff, it's absolutely great. We learned about commercial operations, we learned about visual line of sight, we learned about ATZs, we learned about MATZs, we learned about no tanks, we learned about RC, 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 RC. Right, I'm here with Chris at the moment. Me and Chris have just gone through, what, like, 10 hours? Yeah. It's good though, I've enjoyed it. It's just really tiring. Um, and now we're having a well-earned... Whilst watching the rugby. So what are your main thoughts about today's drone course, Christopher? Uh, a lot to take in, is what I'd say, mate. A lot to take in. Um, yeah, it's complex. Who knew flying aircraft was so difficult? It's got to be easy, eh? Especially that little drone. I mean, that thing that just sits just sits on the palm of your hands like that. You think this could never kill anyone, but it's a murder weapon. <laughs> you, could, you could kill yeah. someone with this. Yeah, another hotel room in my vast life of being in hotel rooms. Let me put you down there. Let's flop that screen out, guys. So yeah, I got here really early, as you can see from the footage, and like I wasn't gonna film while I was in the classroom. Let's face it, I am here to learn, so that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to sort of compromise that. Basically, we just went straight into it. Quarter past eight we started, and we finished at just about six o'clock. So I got to watch the end of England getting thrashed by Scotland, uh, which was a bit gutting. Yeah, I managed to get into the bar, have a couple of Morettis, uh, and I think I'm gonna have a few more, actually. I've got a feeling. Um, I have enjoyed it. I've learnt a lot as well. I'm very interested in aviation anyway, and I am going to be doing my private pilot's license over the next couple of years, but it's really expensive, and it's one of those things that you you can only really do while you've got money, if you know what I mean. It's £150 an hour, and you have to do 40 hours, so it works out about £6,500 to get your PPL. But if I did that, then if I had a meeting in, let's say, for example, the opposite side of the country, I could fly over there in half an hour, rather than a four-hour drive or whatever it may be. So that's one thing I really want to do. But I would highly recommend anyone who's like thinking of using a drone or doing this sort of work to come over to uh, a, a, a course like UAV8. They've been wicked. I really had no idea what to expect and I'm actually really pleased that I've done this. These guys have really switched on. The two guys that we've got, I think Mark and Simon, are both military and they are very, very clued up on what they're doing. Everything, all their terminology, all the stuff they come out with is absolutely tip top. And the reason I'm doing this is effectively for you. I'm doing it for you and I'm doing it for, I mean, I'm a, I'm a philanthropist, <laughs> whatever it may be. I don't know what the word is, but I'm doing it for you. I want to be able to record drone footage, but I want to be able to do it legally, safely. God, you can see I've been in a classroom all day. I'd never talk like this normally, would I? But look, I need to go, number one, because I need a wee and I need a poo. So you guys are going off for the night and I'm going to go grab myself a beer. See you soon. The answer to that question. 
Let me turn the lights on, then we can sit down with proper lighting and I'll tell you all about it. Right, so number one, I'll say, it's been a really, really long day. We got into the room this morning at eight o'clock this morning. I, I had a little bit of a head because you know what I'm like, went to a nice restaurant, uh, had some food, stuff like that, had a few beers, a couple of glasses of wine, bang, suddenly before you know it, you're feeling a little bit tired. Silly thing to do, obviously on the day of an examination and when I paid quite a lot of money to come here anyway, but there you go, you can have a go at me in the comments below. Phone keeps vibrating. Did a proper exam. Uh, sat down with an exam paper. Mate, I haven't even seen an exam paper since like A level, but passed 96%. Wasn't the highest. Lad next to me got 98. Chris, well done, mate. Oh God, just that this beer's tasting so good. It is now 20 to eight and I've just got out. So I'm gonna have a couple of beers uh, and then it's the practical assessment tomorrow. So like sure, I'll definitely take you along for the ride on that one. Right, so it's the morning of the assessment. It's absolutely freezing. Yeah, so here we are. So yeah, this is the place where we're going to be doing this insane drone course. Naz, you're happy, aren't you? Yo, Bradley. Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's seriously, seriously cold now. The van has been running for a while. Let me just shut this door. Oh, guys, the weather. Look how bad it is. Look how bad it is out here. Freezing our nuts off. So this is the salubrious surroundings we have to keep ourselves warm in while we're here. Drones galore. Start folding in the way. Yeah, so it's been chilly today, but we're in our little our little <laughs> little hut. At the moment, you pass. Go, 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 go. How's you going? Uh, I thought it was alright. Uh, and yeah, just going over and going to have a look at these guys and uh, have a little look at actually what the practical assessment of doing a drone course entails. So the practical assessment was exactly what you'd expect it to be. It wasn't something you could exactly fail, but you had to demonstrate that you knew how to fly your drone. Therefore, we had to fly up 10 meters from our little takeoff point and then demonstrate a control test, which basically was going left, right, backwards and forwards to ensure that your controls were all working okay before you went up to do a sortie. After that, you had to fly up to 50 feet by approximation. That meant you weren't allowed to look down at your controller you had to guess what 50 feet high was we had to fly out about 300 meters to a target area and take three photos i think you'd agree these are some of the most emotional photos i think i've ever taken with my drone i'm gonna cry <laughs> after that we flew back to the landing area and did a few figure of eights and just showed basic control of our drone by flying around with the instructor you always know it's going quite well when the instructor just starts chatting to you about your drone and not telling you what to do and things like that you just get a feeling that you're going to be okay after that, I was told that I'd passed my practical assessment and we all went off for a very emotional awards ceremony. Right, so I've passed. Yeah. Never thought it was going to happen. Especially so after last night, eight points. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> James, Thanks, congratulations Thank you. on uh, passing your practical assessment. Did you crash? Did you crash? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Did you wings? Cheers. Well done. I've got some wings now. So proud, so proud that this has happened today. Yeah. Moments like this, I just want to cry. Congratulations. Overall, not only did I learn a lot about my drone, learn a lot about how the skies above us are governed, learn a lot about how weather systems work, but above all, I had fun all the way along while I was doing it. I could highly recommend UAV8. Uh, they're absolutely great. Some of the guys had come from Scotland, some guys had come from Wales, and I think that's a testament to how good their training is. And I could definitely recommend them in the future and I'll leave a link to their website below. Anyway, I'm gonna get back in the van now because I can go and see Emily and... Cuddles and schnuck schnucks. <laughs>